Greetings fellow survivors of the coronavirus. I am broadcasting what was formerly known in 2019 as a gym. Now this video is going to be a review on the Aussie Strength Bow Bar. I also have in comparison to that the Kabuki Duffalo Bar. Now this Bow Bar is uh, good for those who have any issues with shoulder mobility because where the bar sits on your back, your hands can be a little lower. So it's a little more relief in your shoulders. Uh, it's also good for bench pressing because you have a further range of motion to travel if that is what you would need. So if you're holding the bar here, whereas a straight bar would come to your chest here, you've got another few centimeters there to stretch. Another, that's, so there's two uses there. The third extra benefit to a bow bar is the instability because the main point that you're contacting it, whether it's from here or benching from there, because the weights are below that point, they'll be shaking below you. So you get some sort of uh, instability there to control. So I'll sort of demonstrate, so you see how it sort of shakes a bit? That's what I'm talking about. Now, this bar here is made in China. It is, um, 20 kilograms, whereas the Kabuki one is made in America and is 25 kilograms. Now, the biggest issue with this bar is the center knurling. That is my biggest gripe of it. And that is why I invested my money into buying the Kabuki bar, uh, the Kabuki Duffalo bar, which is just far, far more superior than this one. Now, first of all, let me just break it to you guys size does matter. This center knurling here is only four and a half inches. Do you want to go around saying four and a half inches is enough? I hope not. Whereas in America, their knurling is 12 inches. Now, I haven't used this bar for a few months because it's just giving me the shits of how thin the knurling is. The issue of that knurling, well the issue of the bow bar well, it's not an issue, it's actually a good thing, but bad in this case with no knurling, is because the bar is bowed, when it is on your back, instead of a regular bar where the main pressure will be right in the middle, you're actually increasing or distributing the weight of the bar over your whole back from here to here. I haven't used the Aussie Strength Bar for months and I can't believe how easy it was to just slide it over my back. So I'm going to try the same thing with the uh, Kabuki Duffalo Bar now. See how much it grips. Same spot. It's stuck. It's really stuck in my back. That whole section of knurling is just gripped to my shirt and it just will not move from there. It's just fucking way better. Fucking shit. So you've just got more smooth bar on your back, which just makes it a whole lot worse for squatting. It just slides down, moves all around. This is why this bar really, really excels in the bow bar. Now I've actually made suggestions to Aussie Strength to just do it full knurling, or at least increase it. And they don't take constructive criticism very well. They will um, say that no one else has complained about it, even if you send them a screenshot straight away of a friend of yours who has the same bar, who also agrees with you that it does slide down, it's pretty bad. And then they will actually just block you because they don't want to hear any feedback. The issue of these companies is they don't actually build this stuff, they just buy it from China. Um, that's a slogan by Aussie AlphaFit, is built, not brought. And that is the biggest issue in Australia with any gym equipment, 
is there's no one there who actually gives a shit about research and development and getting a bar and actually testing it and then making improvements. They just have a checklist of items on their website and they just want to tick the box, there's the item, take it or leave it. If you give them any criticism back, they're not very happy with it because they don't actually have any pride in their equipment, obviously, if this is what they're putting out. Um, and this is why it's hanging from the monolith because if someone honestly says they put some research and development into this bar, um, they should be hanging from a monolith because it's just really bad. <laughs> it's, you know, I can use it for a few months and point out all these flaws in it and suggest improvements and you get blocked and later on they actually implement those changes. So there's my paycheck because whoever you got sort of designing this um, ain't worth the cookies. Anyway, so that's the biggest issue and I haven't used it for months and when I did use it today, I couldn't believe how much I could just move the empty bar on my back. I couldn't feel any knurling whatsoever. And I had to just, uh, this is when the Kabuki bar was already put away. So I had to grab the Kabuki bar and try it with this just to feel the difference myself. And this thing just, because it's so much wider and there's all this contact on your back rather than all this contact, it just stuck on the shirt. So let me just show you. So with this bow bar, your back's gonna be like from, from here to here, right? So you've got about six inches on this side, six inches on this side of smooth contact. And the only knurling is five inches, four and a half, five inches. So out of 15 inches, so was it six I said? Six, six, that's 12, 16. So out of 16 inches, only a quarter is knurled. That is the big issue of why it slides around so, so much. Because you, you only got a quarter contact of knurling. Three quarters is fucking smooth bar. Whereas the Kabuki one, my back may be touching it three inches out from the knurling. Either side, so that's six inches, and that's 12. So if that's the case for a bigger person, then you've at least got 50% contact with a really good knurling. Okay, as opposed to a quarter of the weight, a quarter of the bar knurled, and it just, it's easy to move my hand on. I'm not really gripping at all. That's a lot harder to move my hand on. It grips a lot better. So that's the biggest concern of this bar. It's quite apparent there's been no research and development done in this bar. It's just a first bar comes in, ticks the box, put it on the website, and sell it. That's exactly what this bar is. And there's, um, that's why it's getting this sort of review because that's all it deserves. Sorry, but that's the facts. Apart from that, it's Olympic bar, it fits Olympic weights. It's 20 kilograms. It uh, fits in all power racks. And it is a bow bar. Is it a good bow bar? Absolutely not. It is, that's why I spent my money on this much better bar here. So, you know, in this gym, I don't really take any compromises to any bad equipment, and that's why I often upgrade stuff. That's why I've had three reverse hypers, that's why I've had three hamstring curls machines, that's why I've had two belt squats, uh, that's why I've had about four sets of dumbbells, and I've now got the Evenco set here, which I think are really good. Um, it's just always upgrading, always trying things out, finding the flaws in them, what I don't like about it, and trying to find an alternative, a better piece of equipment which uh, fits those boxes, um, better quality, better design, whatever it is. So that's my review of the Aussie Strength Bow Bar. I hope you don't buy it. It also comes from China again. So in case you forgot, this is why gyms are now extinct because there's so many fitness companies who don't design their own stuff or build it and manufacture it in Australia, they just buy from China and there you go, you get what you're given. That goes for so many companies here, unfortunately. So we've got to sort of um, spend your money where you want it to be kept. So this is made in USA. Uh, in Australia, we have Australian Barbell Co and AlphaFit who both make 
uh, some equipment in Australia. Not everything will be from here, I realize that, but there's quite a lot that is. So I just sold my um, Aussie Strength bow bar yesterday and the guy I brought it off just told me some funny information that basically he's been to lots of powerlifting gyms around Australia and most of these gyms have the Aussie Strength bow bar. What they do to it is they have to actually get some sort of grippy tape, duct tape or something and tape on the uh, smooth part of the bar. So there is dozens and dozens of these customers of the Aussie Strength bar who have to modify the bar after purchasing it to make it usable. So I hope that information sort of brings you to the decision of um, how far some companies go into actually delivering a good usable product to the end user and how some of them actually don't go that far at all to doing that which is um, why this bar is the best, the Kabuki Strength Duffalo Bar.